Now we do cost of redeemable debt. Um, we just finished cost of irredeemable debt, which was quite simple. Redeemable debt actually will require more calculations. And effectively, cost of debt, when it is redeemable, it has to be an IRR. So you have to calculate the IRR of the cash flows which are associated with that debt, okay? IRR of the cash flows, uh, internal rate of return. So debt is raised. What happens that debt is raised, interest is paid at the coupon rate for several years, maybe five years. Then the debt is redeemed, which means that you return back the debt. And sometimes it is at premium, which means that maybe a hundred dollar debt has a 10% or 20% premium. So what happens that you take a hundred dollar debt at say 10%. So you take hundred dollar debt at 10% for five years at a premium of 20%. So what happens that you get 100 here and then you keep on paying for five years 10%, which is $10, $10, $10, and $10. This will be treated as negative cash flow, negative. And then you will pay a premium of 120. So in the last year, you pay the interest and you also return back the original amount with a 20% premium. And then you have to find out now, because it is not irredeemable, so it has a beginning, it has an end, it has year zero, it has year five. And you will find out, you will discount it at your discount rate, which is 5%, 6%, 8%, whatever. And when you discount it, you will find out your cash flows and you will find out your IRR. Let's see how we happen. So redeemable debt is cost is internal rate of return of the cash flows. Always more complicated calculation. And this is more common in exams because irredeemable was very easy to be tested. So let's suppose a situation here. A company has dollar two million, seven percent debentures in issue, which means that coupon rate is seven percent over every hundred dollar bond. They are redeemable in five years at a premium of 30%. So a hundred dollar debenture will be redeemed at $130. Current market value is $120. So face value was 100. I told you that you will always consider that these debentures or bonds, they have a face value of 100, but their market value is 120. Corporation tax is 25%. We need this information as well. And what is the post-tax cost of the debentures? Now, because it is redeemable, it has five years life. So we are going to calculate the IRR. Um, how do you calculate the IRR? We will make a table, um, set up a series of cash flows relating to the issue of $100 par value debt at the current market value, at the current market value, paying interest, getting tax relief, and then redeeming the debt. So let's see how do we do that. Now, this is the table which you have to calculate and produce. There is no other way of doing it, okay? So number one, in year zero, you will take the market value. You will consider that this is your cash outflow, okay? This is the cash outflow, 120. Uh, then what happens that from year one to year five, you have to pay interest of 7% and you should take 7% of $100, which is the face value, and that means $7. So, but $7, which is your cash, which is your coupon rate, which you are paying, but it is your interest cost, and you get the tax benefit. So you multiply it with one minus T, and one minus T means because tax rate is 25%, so it means that $7 multiplied by 0 0.75 after tax, okay? So this is what we are doing here, seven multiplied by 75%. 75% means one minus tax, one minus 0.25. So either you multiply it with 75%, or you multiply it with one minus T or something, the tax benefit. So what is happening? It is seven into 75%. This is what you will pay. In the last year, you have to pay, you have to redeem. So this is actually the last year is here as well and here as well. So what I say that, because this will become an, here I will treat it as an annuity factor for five years to make calculations easy. So remember that you are going to pay $7, $7, $7, $7, $7. So we take it like this and we multiply it with the annuity factor. 
but in the last year we have to pay 130 further and here we will use the present value factor because this is a one time payment in the fifth year okay so what we do here we multiply it with the factors at 10 percent there is no discount rate given for this company we assume from ourselves 10 percent we take 10 percent um, you can assume usually 10 percent okay so if I, if I take a 10% discount rate, a 10% discount rate, the five years factor is 3.791. You can calculate your NVT tables, which are given in exam. Uh, in your books as well, in exam, NVT table will be given. So you will see uh, a five years, 10%, okay? On 10%, you will see for five years. It will give you 3.791. And then in the fifth year, in the last fifth year, you also have to return back the, you have to redeem this bond at a premium of 30%. So you are paying 130 more. And this 130 is the present value of the five-year factor. This factor, 0 0.621, it is taken from the present value table. This value is taken from the annuity table. Now, I'm sure that you people are quite familiar because you already have covered the topics so you know what is a present value table and what is an annuity table. So you take it from the present value table and then you say, okay, how much is the value? With it, and this is in year zero. In, in year zero, the discount rate is always one. So now 120 multiplied by one, seven into 75% into 3.791 and 130 into 0 0.621. You get these numbers. And when you take the net present value, when you take the present value of the cash flow, it comes out to be 19.371 and this is negative. So the present value comes out to be the negative. This is actually the NPV. This is actually NPV. So you have calculated NPV at 10% and it comes out to be negative NPV. Now, if you remember that, whenever we are calculating IRR thing, we always have to take two NPVs one NPV a positive and the other NPV has to be negative. So if we already have calculated a negative NPV, now we definitely want to calculate a second NPV which should be positive. And in order to have it positive, you must decrease the discount rate. At 10%, it is giving me negative. So I must decrease the discount rate. I assumed 5%. You can assume 6%. And let's see if a positive NPV comes up or not. So at, if I find out at 5%, what are the discount factors? For year zero, it is always one, agreed. For year one to five, again, I will go back and see the NVT table for five years, but I will not see in 10%, I will see at 5%. I'll say, what is the 5% NVT factor for five years? This is 4.321. And then I say, what is the present value? What is the present value factor? for five years at 5%, this is 0.784. Again, this is coming from the NVT table and this is coming from the present value table. So you find out these factors, you multiply these factors, this with the cash flow. Where is your cash flow? This is the cash flow. So 120 multiplied by one, it goes like this. 7775 multiplied by 4.329. And then the same cash flow, because this is the cash flow with 0.784. So first you, and then you find, so first what you did, you took this cash flow, multiplied them with 10% factor. Now you take the same cash flow and multiply them with the five year factor. Cash flows are same. Cash flows are same. Cash flows do not change. Only the factors will change. These are the factors for 10% you multiply. Then these are the factors for 5% you multiply. You get a positive NPV. Oh, now that makes sense. We are sorted out because what we want to calculate IRR, we want two NPVs, one positive, one negative, and of course, two discount rates. So if you remember from past your IRR formula, what was your IRR formula? Your IRR formula was A. This is what I you always use. You can use any other variables, X, Y, Z. I use A. So if you are studying with me, you, you are familiar what is A. A plus, this is A over A minus b and then into b minus a and percentage and this is also you know a percentage or whatever now what is a and what is b remember 
A was the lower discount rate at which you have a positive NPV. So this is going to be A. And the, this NPV, which is a positive NPV, it has to be capital A. And small b is the higher discount rate at which the NPV is negative. So this is your capital B. And this is your small b. Now you put down the values A plus A minus B. What is A? 5%. So you take the small percentage, 5%, plus capital A, which is the positive NPV, 4.65, divided by A minus B, which means 4.65 minus 19.37. Now, if you pay attention to this 19.37 is already negative. So when I say A minus B, so it means that 4.65 minus minus so two minus will become because minus into minus 19.365 so it essentially will always become a positive number so you will put a positive sign although in formula i'm putting minus but when you multiply minus because it, it has to be a negative npv so when you multiply it minus to minus it becomes positive 4.65 into 19.37 and then you say multiplied by B minus A. B was the large percentage, which is 10%, minus the small discount rate, which is 5%, okay? Now, when you will solve it out, it will give you your IRR. So once you calculate your two NPVs, you set up your cash flow table. In year zero, you always take the market value as a negative cash flow. This is important to remember. You don't have to put here face value. You will put the market value 120 and then you say how much coupon rate i have to pay i have to pay seven dollars and then i after tax after tax it is only 75 percent one minus t which means one minus 2.25 0 0.75 this is my after tax interest rate it is a five-year factor this is the final year cash flow and i set up with two npvs you can try to do it with 12%, 5%, 10%. Usually it is it is between, you know, if I had seen, let's suppose, when I was doing calculation, if this 10% comes out to be positive number, then I would have taken here 15%. Because if 10% is giving me a positive NPV, so I want other one to be negative, so I would increase the discount rate. You know that if you increase discount rate, NPV decreases. Okay, and it becomes ultimately minus. So once you solve this, this equation, it will give you your IRR. How much it is? We have solved it out and it is 6%. It is the same formula. So what is the cost of this redeemable debt? It is 6%. And it is post-tax because we actually included the tax impact, okay? So it is a post-tax. Uh, you don't apply the, uh, how to say, tax impact to this thing. You, you pay attention. I'm giving out seven, and then I'm giving out 130. But I did not uh, took um, tax impact here. Why? Because this is the returning of loan. This is not your expense. In This is interest. This is your expense. So this has to be post-tax, not this one because this is you are paying off the liability. It's not an expense. And similarly, this is also not because this is not income. So there is no tax impact on this one and this one because these are assets and liabilities. This is something which will have the tax impact, income or expenses. This is an important topic and uh, very important from exam purposes as well. It does have some, how to say, it takes time to solve it but not really very difficult. If you understand the concept of NPV and IRR from your previous chapters, then it should be easy for you. In any case, you need to do practice on this thing uh, because if you don't do practice, then it will take you more time in exam to solve it and probably you will be end up wasting your time. So do some practice on this issue.